Welcome to the Screencast Showdown where we pit TechSmith Camtasia Studio, the top of the line desktop premier screencast software for both the Mac and the PC at $299 used in business, training, education. I've used it for years. Fabulous, powerful tool against Screencast-O-Matic. Screencast-O-Matic has been around more recently. It's a $12 a year web-based application which does have some editing tools on the pro version which is what we're going to be using. We're going to use this in a scenario where we're going to take these two programs show you how they capture and compare with each other. Notice you have webcam, notice you have audio, notice you have webcam, notice you have audio, record button, record button. That's how simple it is. Each of these also has preset screen capture sizes. So we're going to set up the screen capture size we want and we're going to expand out over here also on Screencast-O-Matic. And that's the size we want. And the reason we're doing this is because we're using a tool out here called the results machine. And the results machine, we're using this, it gives us focus and energy to get results from what we're working with. So let's go ahead and show you how these work. Camtasia Studio, we're going to hit the record button and you can see what that looks like. Boom, counts down and we're up and running. So that's how it works. Under Screencast-O-Matic, again, we hit the record button and boom, here we go, a countdown and it's up and running. Now you see the little green box here? That's Camtasia Studios recording area. So we're going to move it up and put it around the results machine. And on Screencast-O-Matic, we're going to take it and move it to where it's also working in the same area that we have with Camtasia Studio. There we go. So we've started our screencast. We're recording. And that's the results machine. So with that video in place, I can watch it and see that I'm happy with it. And I can then export it, save it out, upload it to YouTube, save it as Screencast-O-Matic, file export, or edit. The editor in Screencast-O-Matic looks like this. Tools on the top, and your ability to say done, and some hints and help along the way. This history lists the different commands that you've entered. So that's the editor in Screencast-O-Matic. When you stop Camtasia Studios Recorder, it shows up in this screen area here with the preview capabilities. When your preview is completed, then you can save and edit or produce it directly or delete it. In this case we're going to save and edit because we want it to open up in Camtasia Studio. So we're going to save our capture here. It's going to come up. And here we are in Camtasia Studio. The editor is now open and we have in the timeline down here the visual clues of the video that we're watching. We have a preview screen that we can watch the video in with a slider as well as the different types of tasks we can do including callouts, zoom, audio, transitions and more. Let's get to work with editing. So right here we are going to use that at the end. There's the beginning. Hit the delete key and say goodbye. The trimming is done. We're now at the beginning with the image what we want. So that's it. There it is trimming in, screen, in Camtasia. And now in Screencast-O-Matic we're going to do the same thing. We're going to trim around what we want. And what we have to do here is we're going to get rid of this. See right here we've got the Camtasia Studio and the other lines on here. So we're going to slide this over to the point where we get rid of all those elements and we're ready to do the recording ourselves which is right here. We say trim trim around and boom our video is now right where we want it at the beginning so that's trimming. Now we're going to add the header into the page. To do that we're just going to right click and say add it to the timeline and boom it's right on the timeline timeline here now it's added. That's it. That's in Camtasia Studio. Let's go see what it takes in Screencast-O-Matic. Screencast-O-Matic, there is no place to add except for to insert more. We're going to insert more. We're going to do a new recording. And so here we go. We're doing a quick recording. It's recording this stuff that we see on the screen here when I'm ready for it. So we're going to clear this all out. Get a blue screen here and just do a quick recording on this. So 
Let's get going with that. Now you can see that we've got a blue blank screen here for the duration that we recorded it for at the beginning. And then after that, we'll have, of course, the other piece come in. So, so there we go. Now we're going to add in the image we want. So the first thing I do is I select the area I want to do the overlay for, which is just over this blue area recorded. So now we're going to do the overlay. To do that, we're going to click on Add Overlay over the selected area. Click Start. And of course, we're going to add an image overlay. So we're going to click on the image overlay here. And that's going to let me go get the image. Here's the image we're going to work with. Open that up, and there it is. So here's the image. We can, of course, zoom in on the image. Make it so it's bigger, which is what we wanted to do to match what we did in Camtasia. And there we go. The image is now what we want to see. Let's see how that looks. I think that's going to be fine. We're done here. So here's the end results of the overlay. As you can see, we can scroll along here. And it fades in and goes out. Pretty good. So that's how it looks in Screencast-O-Matic. So let's go ahead and do a zoom in pan on this. And on here, we can just drag these things down to zoom in. And there we go. Now we can make it so the results machine is primary in this whole thing. And as you can see, as we scroll along in this, it looks pretty nice. And then we go on to the Electrix part of it. So there you go. That's what it looks like in terms of getting an overlay into the beginning of the video for you. Okay, so now we're adding in the timer group area. We've typed in timer group area. We've got that showing up. We want to extend this out a little bit to make it so the words show up. So there we go. Timer group area will be there as we play this forward. So that's what we want to go with that. Then it talks about the activities right here. So now we're going to add in the activity group area. And we're going to call that some actions. So there's the actions area. We're going to add that in. And it's going to go over here in this section. So there we go. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, so let's go back this out all the way and see how this looks from the beginning. There we go. Because they're both selected at this time, that's how that one's going to work. Let's go see what that looks like in Camtasia Studio. These are called callouts in this case. It gives us a chance to pick some shapes and some effects. You see, we have lots and lots of choices here, whereas we don't have quite so many choices on the other side. And so now we've got this blue area. We can add in here, and we can add in text. And the text, of course, is the timer group area. Mm -hmm. There we go. And we can change the background colors and other things here. We can do that. We just have go to fill, change the fill color. Now we go by other stuff. We have one. So we have it. The text itself, we can make it larger. I think we have only about 40. So that should do that. We're going to add that callout. Oops. I'll put this one over here. Timer group's now in place. We expand it out to be the size of the other one. And so we have the timer group area lined up here. We do the same thing now with the other group. We're going to call it, of course, the actions area. And there we go. We need to make it so it fits. Actions area. And there we go. We can identify how long these go for it based on the color size. So we can make those out or shorten them. Well, they're in control over here in Camtasia Studio. So here's what those look like. You see, as we move along, one comes in, talking about the timer group area. And then the one comes in for the actions area. Timer group fades away. So a little bit fancier on that side of things. Selected our area. We're going to be doing the zooming. We've selected the area we want down here. We're clicking on zooming. And we're going to use the follow the mouse zoom. And just say start that. And it's going to go out and take care of that for us. So now when we get into the video, you'll see that it actually has that zoomed in. So let's go play that. So there we go. Zoom right in. 500 pixels wide. Awfully cool. And here at the end of the zoom, you can see it'll just zoom right out. Now we're back down to our regular size again. This time, instead of following the mouse, of course, we're just going to zoom in on the area where the activity is taking place, and you can see how that works. The zoom starts in one location, ends in another location. We're going to end just about there. Okay, there we go. Let's give that a go. See what that looks like. There it is. Zoomed right in. Off and running. And then it will fade out from there. So pretty cool how that zoom works. And so here we are. We've inserted this video by clicking on Insert More. And a new recording. We recorded this video from off of a screen capture situation also. And so that's how we added that in. And then we did a simple overlay. And the overlay now ends at the end of the video. So the last step, edit the audio. So editing the audio for the section that we have selected. We're going to replace the audio. And as it starts to play, as we start to do this, we also click here to hold the video. Now it's holding the video and it's just taking the recording. Thank you, Gavin, for sharing with us the results machine. Indeed, it's been influenced my business and helped me also to identify the length of tasks I'm doing and some bad habits I had in continuing to add extra time. So thank you. Increased results, 100% focus. At this point, we want to insert the testimonial. Now, there's two places that information is stored here, in the cycle bin or the clip bin and the library. So we're going to bring this resource into the library. We have import media. 
find the fossil gamma mount for his bodice. The results we've seen there's an import here. The video that he's created has been added to the library. Now with the head at the end of the video here, we can take this testimonial video and just drag and drop it in the place we want it. And there we go. It's been added. Now we can move the head just slightly to the side here. Press play and make sure that the video we're working on goes in the right places and ends up where we want it. So there's the results we've seen, and there's Gavin Mountford, founder. See, there you go. So that's how it started. And we go to the end of his testimonial at the very end down here. And let me make sure this plays out properly at the end. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. So there we go. That's the testimonial added now to the video. And the last thing we want to do at this point is slide the slider over at the end of the video. And we want to add in an overlay here of this header. We take the header that we had before, drop it into place, and here it is now added to the end of the video. And because this is, and we can zoom in on this, so we can zoom in thing, tighten up the vision on that so we can see what we want to see, get visually what we want. And go from there, this is not an overlay in this case, it's just this added media to the side. So we can lengthen that out a little bit so it goes longer. And there we go. So now we've added in the last media pieces that we want. The last thing that we'll do is add in some audio adjustments. So adding voice now to the last part of the video. We're going to click at the end here, put the head there, go to voice narration, and there we're going to go ahead and record our voice by starting recording. This is going to add it to the audio track 2. Audio track 1, of course, was the original audio, so we're going to go to audio track 2 and record that now. So here we go. The results machine, 100% focused for getting things done fast, and if it it's like if it works for you like it did for me, you'll find that it will reveal to you the weaknesses that you have in your productivity. It will help you to identify the time it takes to accomplish tasks that were unknown before. And more than that, it will allow you to be far more productive through greater focus. The results machine. So now we're going to go ahead and put it in here to the closing part of this and save it as a WAV file. And so there we go. It's been added to the end as a WAV file. Saving that now. There we go. Notice that it add, inserted here at the end on audio track 2, the audio we needed at the end. We also have a problem here with our visual. It doesn't go to the end of the audio, so we'll move that down. You see how easy it is to make these manipulations in the timeline on Camtasia Studio. And there you have it, the Screencast Showdown, Camtasia Studio versus Screencast-O-Matic in the feature-by-feature face-off. Excellent. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it provided you the information and what you needed about Screencast recording and a couple of options for you. I hope that you noticed that the previewing and editing tools in both programs are strong. I hope you also saw that there's trimming front-end and back-end that both easily provided. Also that you can insert headers and title images, as well as that you have those wonderful features called overlays and callouts, strong in both programs. Also, aside from that, zooming, get that attention to those specific details you want, as well as inserting audio and video into both programs. Very simple. Of course, Camtasia Studio is stronger on an easier to use interface. Screencast-O-Matic takes a little getting it used to, but very strong in its performance as well. It's your time to make a choice. Enjoy your using screencasting tools to better your business, build trainings, sales videos, whatever you need. It's a great way to communicate. Best of success.